Welcome back to the show. You know, 30 years ago, photojournalist Ted Jackson was looking to photograph a story about a homeless encampment for the New Orleans Times Picayune newspaper. Well, what he found was one man, Jackie Wallace, once considered a football great, Super Bowl winner, and hometown hero, now homeless and living under a bridge. Yes, and that began a decades long friendship. Not an easy one, but one that lasted. In his new book, You Ought to Do a Story About Me, Ted Jackson shares a story of addiction, friendship, and redemption. I was under the bridge looking for a story about homelessness, and uh, the story I was looking for did not materialize. So I was walking back to my car, st pretty much kind of stumbled over this man sleeping, and uh, I shot his photo uh, because of the, the uniqueness of his camp. Woke him up and asked him a question, and he said those words, you ought to do a story about me. And I said, why? Because, you know, when you hear that question a lot, you know, you hear that people ask that a lot. And uh, so I said, why? And he said, because I've played in three Super Bowls. And um, I was stunned. I did not recognize his name at first, but the, the sports department at the paper filled me in uh, of his career. And uh, but they said that they didn't know where he was anymore. He had disappeared. And uh, I said, I, I know where he is now. And uh, that's what started it all. How does a guy that spent that many years in the National Football League that played in three Super Bowls end up sleeping under a bridge under this clear plastic wrap? The photo was just so incredible when I saw it, it grabbed me. Uh, but how does that guy end up sleeping under a bridge? Well, you know, he had a great career, he had a great family, he had a great upbringing, even though he was raised in a housing development, they had a wonderful life. And um, uh, he, had, he had a great career up until his last game, you know, it was a real struggle for him in the last Super Bowl he played in. Uh, he was with the Rams at the time. And um, it, was, it was hard for him getting out of football. He wasn't prepared for it. Um, but, he, but he pulled himself out of that depression that he had and uh, went to work offshore here in Louisiana, was making more money than he made in the NFL. And, um, but then a couple of years later, his mother died. And she died of lung cancer. And uh, that rocked his world. And he had a relative who sold crack here in New Orleans. And to ease that pain, he just needed an escape as he described it, and he made the mistake of his life and, um, and went to see his cousin that night after the funeral. It was the same day of the funeral. Wow, so, so the addiction to crack cocaine and you know, being shunned from the NFL, being put out, all those things weighed in to what put him under the bridge and being homeless at that time. How about the issue of CTE? I know that's a big thing that's happening right now that they're paying a lot of attention to in football especially. Uh, do you think that played a part? Um, I don't know that it played a part at that time because he was still pretty young and um, the, the effects had not kicked in yet. But uh, when he was in his 40s, he started noticing some things. Um, but, uh, you know, it, it, it shaped his, um, his decision making. And when he tried to get off crack, uh, when, when the story ran in the newspaper in 1990, 30 years ago, when I found him, uh, he was, uh, his teammates from his high school got him off the streets and into a rehab in Baltimore where he lived for about 11 years, clean, sober, had a great life. But that's when the CTE started kicking in at that point. And I think that led um, to a lot of bad decisions that put him back on the streets at that time. That means this isn't really a one and done type of situation where we just send him to this rehab and he's all better now. That's right. And um, that's where the friendship that Jackie and I developed comes in. And uh, that relationship that we built, um, you know, helped me understand the inside world of Jackie, you know, inside his mind that, um, that, it, that addiction is not something, you know, when you, when you defeat um, that momentary addiction, you can't ride off into the sunset and declare victory. You have to fight this every day. And that's what I learned about Jackie. That it was a constant struggle and he needed um, all these resources that anybody can throw at it to, uh, to, to fight this. You and Jackie still have a 30 year friendship that remains. And I'm sure you don't have that kind of relationship with everybody you've done stories on over the years. 
How did you guys maintain that relationship? And has it been easy or has there been rocky roads along the way? It's been very rocky. It's um, I, I've always felt like, um, you know, there's a spiritual aspect of this. I've always felt like Jackie was kind of laid at my door. Um, and I, I felt a responsibility for him to, to, um, to try to do everything I could to, first of all, tell his story because that was so important to him to let people know what he had been through and how crack destroyed his life and how he constantly strives to bring his life back and to, to, um, to, to find everything he can to, to uh, rehabilitate himself, I guess you could say. Uh, he has an incredible spirit and that friendship has just blossomed from that. It's been tough on me to try to understand all these things and to help. Um, but the, the things that I've learned from Jackie has been just immeasurable. Uh, the, the, the compassion that we share and, and, and the things that he teaches me about, uh, about faith, uh, about perseverance, uh, it, it's changed me. It's changed the way, um, the way I see the world. And um, I get to see him uh, regularly now. Uh, talked to him yesterday. Um, we just have a wonderful friendship now. It's just uh, pretty amazing to uh, to be able to 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 start under the bridge like that, and uh, and to see him the way he is today. Wow, Terry, what a great interview! Just incredible to hear that friendship blossom and just that reminder that addiction it's it's not a, a one and done thing. It is a daily struggle. Yeah, absolutely. And this was something that really touched me close to heart as someone who's played football for the majority of my life since I was 11 years old. And it's been surrounding my life, my dad playing professional football and my closest friends playing football and knowing that this type of situation can happen to any of us, especially dealing with addiction. And like I said, issues with CTE, something that's really prevalent right now uh, when it comes to that kind of uh, contact sport, uh, it just really hit home. And to see the friendship develop was cool. Absolutely. I mean, and that was just what it's going to be my next question is that, you know, there is that whole, it's not even really a debate anymore about CTE and the connection. I mean, how, is, was there any talk maybe hopefully about, you know, more awareness and, and spreading the word on this? Yeah, I think the National Football League is doing a really good job right now of really getting the word out about CTE and taking care of some of its former players. They could be doing a better job, but I think more people are getting aware all the way down to the little leagues of football. Uh, young kids and parents are starting to understand more about the issues and the dangers that are associated with. So they're trying to be safer uh, in the game when it comes to the brain injuries and things like that. But Jackie, he's doing a lot better than he was doing. He's currently living in Louisiana still. He's uh, at a discipleship center for folks dealing with addiction and other issues. And he's, he's a happy guy now and he's looking forward to the rest of his life. I love to hear that. What a great, great ending to that interview and hearing more about that story. Terry, uh, just touched the heart. And you know, earlier Terry and I were talking about New Year's resolutions and people being dry this January. So we got mocktails straight ahead, creative ways to get your drink on when we come back.